This morning, we'll be in the thick of it with a truly funny man, Armando Iannucci. We'll be finding out if you think social workers were right or wrong to take a boy into care after his mum hit him twice with a hairbrush. And we'll be asking if adults these days are scared of young people and hands up who misses Tony Blair. That's the right stuff. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hello and welcome to a really good Friday edition of The Right Stuff with me, Matthew Wright. It's uh, the 10th of April. Happy 376th birthday to the humble banana. Went on sale here in Britain for the first time in 1633. Bless. That was the most we could afford as her as props. I lie. <laughs> it's also 10th of April is the day the Titanic set sail from Southampton 97 years ago. And you can now recreate the doomed ship's fatal voyage to New York with this gin and titanic set. <laughs> All I have to do... <laughs> All I have to do is take one Titanic... <laughs> One ice cube. Oh, my God, they've crashed! <laughs> they've crashed! It's a disaster. Have a look at that. Isn't that fantastic? <laughs> hey? Let's meet the panel, shall we? Oh, <laughs> drink. Good morning to Terry Christian, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, good Catholic boy like yourself. Hot cross bun, sir. Don't mind if I do. Uh, that's a nice one. As long as I don't have to... Kiss the foot of the cross. <laughs> well, everyone else had been there before, haven't they? They only wipe it with a There's a guy, did you see the, the, the story in the papers of the guy who's, I think, walking the world carrying a crucifix? And I thought, God, what an amazing, what an incredibly taxing thing to do. Except I noticed just right at the end of the cross there's a little wheel. <laughs> uh, <laughs> makes it a bit easy. Uh, next to Terry, we have Yasmin Ali Bayer Brown, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> now. <laughs> As a Muslim, you're happy? You're not going to be offended by absolutely. this? Absolutely. No fat I've for forgiven me. you all for everything you ever oh, did. Bless. The crusade is over. <laughs> <laughs> we need more people like you, Yasmin. <laughs> more people like you. I even have liked him as time's gone on. I can on. tell. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't easy, but it grew. <laughs> it grew. You're such a charmer, aren't you? You just come so natural. I'm just honest. <laughs> but it's now. true, I really like him now. Good, good. There you go. She's all right for a heathen. <laughs> 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 now, let's say a big hello to our special guest this morning. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Amanda Iannucci! Hi! <laughs> 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 Now, uh, Amanda is uh, the man, of course, who's helped bring Alan Partridge to our screens in shows like The Day Today, Knowing Me, Knowing You. He's fronted his own comedy shows, including uh, the Friday Night Armistice. He wrote The Thick of It, the award-winning political <laughs> satire, yes, exactly, as in, yeah, which uh, has, in turn, inspired a new movie, In the Loop. Uh, for the uninitiated, Armando, uh, what's it about? What's the film about? It's about... Um, it's set in a period when the American president and the British prime minister are very keen on uh, a war in the Middle East. Gosh. And really? it's all entirely fictional. Oh, clearly. I have to stress that it's yes. not based on anything that may have happened. And But what we do is... Uh, because it's comedy. <laughs> uh, and, <laughs> and what we do is we don't see the President the Premier, we see all the people working underneath them. Sure. We see uh, Tom Hollander, who plays the, the Minister for Overseas Development, who's very anti-war, but he's sort of sucked in by being encouraged to go out and meet the Americans. And um, we've got James Gandolfini, who plays a Pentagon general, who's a, a, a little bit weak. And uh, we've got... And Peter Capaldi, who plays Malcolm Tucker, who's the Prime Minister's enforcer. And he's, he's charged with putting together a... Uh, a, a dossier to prove that uh, military intervention is the right course of action, really, and he's not got much time to do it. God, it's just, it's just um, so different from anything you could ever imagine happening in real I know, life. It is, it's, it is, it's, it is, it is really very dull. Quite well, Alistair Campbell went to see it and he said it was very boring, and, and, and I thought, oh, is, yes. that be, is that because he's seen the, all this before? <laughs> 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 now, talking of Alistair Campbell, yeah. his, uh, I think it's fair to say that Malcolm Tucker is in his mould, uh, played by the brilliant Peter Capaldi, uh, taking centre stage in the loop. Have a butcher's at least. <laughs> Quite frankly, I wish we could just show the whole film and I'll go home early. It's got so many laughs with the team here. And uh, that was very much a daytime uh, clip there of Malcolm Tucker, because he's got a bit of a gutter gob, hasn't he? He's got... Uh, he's, um, he's very baroque with his expressions, and uh, he has to... He, uh, I mean, he swears an awful lot. And, and it's really because we're trying to get the film to be as accurate as possible, and they do swear in that environment. And Is it true you have someone who puts... The swear words there's, in. There's I've a guy, one of the that. writers, Ian Martin, has be, he's become known as the swearing consultant, which is, <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter, really, because he does other stuff as well, but he's very good at coming up with, with really good expressions. And it's really to try and... You know, I find people who swear a lot, I find it a bit 
tedious. So what we try and do is make Malcolm swearing as interesting as possible by, by dressing it up with as many elaborate threats. Putting involving, iPods in places uh, of the body. The bodily and, harm yes. is usually sort of implied yeah. an awful lot with certain Malcolm now, there's also Indeed, Alison Campbell, am I right, yeah. is a judge currently on a TV programme for teenagers who make speeches. That must never happen. It, I <laughs> promise I'm not making this up. Uh, what can we do? What, and now what, do, what, what does he judge them on, the number of swear words they use or do not use? I'll tell you, the most... He's the... a Burnley fan. He's been <laughs> swearing for years. <laughs> <laughs> the most extraordinary film about this, uh, about the thing about this film uh -huh. is, is your ability to be psychic, because uh, one of your, your, your characters, the Tom Hollander character, yeah, the minister, has, yeah. has a problem uh, with porn. Uh, the problem with porn being that he wants to watch it, but he's terrified it'll turn up on his expenses. That's right, yeah. <laughs> How did he do he spends, it? He spends a night, he's, he's over in Washington, and nothing's been organised that night, and he's sitting in his hotel, and he asks his aide, what, what are we doing tonight? And he said, well, we haven't got anything. And he said, well, I, I don't want to stay in here, and I'll have to watch a shark documentary, because if I watch an adult movie, I'll have to register it. And, I mean, and we filmed that about a year ago. Yeah. And, so and what did we, you make of it when the story came out? Well, when we were... Previewing it, we had a sort of premiere last, last week. At that point, everyone just sort of applauded. <laughs> <laughs> and, and people were saying, did you film that last week? We said, no, you, don't, you can't do that with films. You can't do... Because you've, you've had it before, haven't you, with housing, if I remember. The, the, the idea yes. of ministers yeah, paying yeah, yeah. off housing in the thick of it. In an episode of The Thick of It, the minister's worried that he's got a second home in London and his real home is, like, 30 miles out. And he keeps going back to his real home because his wife wants him to keep seeing the kids and stuff like that. So the, the, the home in central London is lying empty and he's in charge of housing. So, and yeah. so there's a case of resident. And, and I don't know, you know, you, some of the time you write these episodes just thinking, what is the silliest thing that could happen? <laughs> and then you write it down and you think, no, that's too silly. It'll never happen. It'll never happen. <laughs> <laughs> and then it happens. And other times you make things up completely and then a politician the next day comes up and says, how did you find that? <laughs> <laughs> Are you saying that's true? It's What's going on? You know, so I, I, I don't know. I don't know whether it's a good thing or a bad thing. If, if, if everything that happens in, in the loop is going to happen, then I sort of despair. Really. We'll all have to leave the country, won't we? We can't. If you're possibly. allowed to, of course. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, some true or false. True or false? You used to be a children's entertainer. Is that right? Hello. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was a satirical clown. <laughs> <laughs> Is that true? Uh, no, I once spent a summer putting up bouncy castles in okay. Glasgow. Yeah, in Glasgow housing estates. Nice. And uh, normally it was fine, but there was one uh, when, when somebody stabbed the bouncy castle and it, it just sort of collapsed in on itself. <laughs> like a black hole that just sort of... Uh, but tell me, what is this fascination with uh, politics? Are you a politician monke who's just... Gone? Uh, I kind of, I've always enjoyed politics. I've never been sort of, I, I mean, I'd be a terrible politician, I to think be honest, so. because whenever, <laughs> <laughs> is that a good thing or a bad thing? I good know. thing. Oh, good <laughs> thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, you know, <clears throat> the thing about polit politicians is we, we want them to, to know the answers to all our questions yes. instantly and have an instant opinion. And, and I'd be very much, if, if somebody asked me a question, I'd say, I'd come up with my view and then they'd express their view and I'd go, yeah, you've got a good point, actually, haven't you? Yeah, I must go away and think about that. But if a politician said that on television, we'd think they were rubbish. You really. tried for so a job we... in politics, though, is that right? Or in the civil no, service? No, I nearly got into the civil service. It was when I was a student and didn't quite know what I wanted to do. And because I, I really wanted to go into comedy, but at that stage, you don't know whether, you know, that's a career or, or whatever. So I, I sort of sat at the civil servant's entrance exam and I, and I, I, I got all the way through it to the final... I was interviewed for the Treasury, and I nearly got into the... I could have been responsible for imposing the poll tax. Yeah. <laughs> I could have... <laughs> and that's exactly what the interviewer said. Because on my CV, it had, like, you know, English, just a comedy, 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 Treasury, you know, and, uh, <laughs> and, and they said they would have had me, but they thought I, I wouldn't take it seriously. And, and Catholic uh, priests somewhere along the line, is that right? Because I know you're, I, you're at a I think that's school. an adolescent. You know, when you're adolescent, you get either, you get, you know, you get very, very kind of... Emotional, so, as you can you know? see Yasmin's face, it's what? an extraordinary mix of contradictions, it is isn't it? It's an extraordinary what? mix of contradictions. <laughs> you're calling me a hypocrite? <laughs> no, I'm calling you a very interesting, complicated yes. person. Oh, that's all right. Uh, that's yes, okay. yes, yes, yes. So, a priest... Oh. Yeah, but then you discover the pay is rubbish, and uh, <laughs> the pay or the pain. The Sorry, pay, no, the pay. The pay yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I mean I was sort of intensely sort of uh, religious when I was young, but that, uh, that, that that's mostly gone away. Right. This is about as religious as I get. Yeah, um, yeah, me too. But I, I can't eat this now because I'll um, I I'll right have a tremendous sugar. These are three rush, Catholic boys at this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
No yeah. wonder. You're feeling under threat? I'm feeling totally <laughs> under threat. Remember what you said, the Crusades, oh, the crusades are over. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, couldn't the crusades. Take, I couldn't take that seriously because one of my first sort of comedy routines was Pope John Paul II doing Julie Andrews. <laughs> which uh, I don't know if... It, if <laughs> talking, <laughs> talking, talking of early routines, uh, before uh, in, the, in the Loop and the All thing right, of it, yeah. Amanda was writing one of my all-time favourite shows, the new satire, The Day Today, and I'm sure oh, well. you'll remember this.